Hey ladies and gents, it's Zen back with the Iconic Planes. We have the ME262 and are probably like, ah, oh, Zem, this plane didn't really even do much. Uh, well, yes, it didn't really, wasn't really that operational until the last part of the war, maybe the last year. However, there's nothing that says German superiority in the um, field of aerodynamics as the ME262. Uh, this was kind of like the Tiger I of World War II for at least at least in the air. Uh, you know, obviously, whenever a Tiger I was spotted on the battlefield, they would call it the Tiger, tiger Panic. Uh, ME-262 kind of inspired the same fear in Allied air crews. Uh, why? Because it was just so much fucking faster. <laughs> it was almost 100 miles an hour faster than the fastest prop-driven aircraft at the time. Uh, not only was it faster, but it also had just an enormous amount of firepower, four 30-millimeter four cannons. Um... 1939, uh, this thing is already starting to be worked out. Um, measurement started working on the uh, ME-262 in 1939. Uh, by, I believe it was November of 1939, they already they had the plan drawn up, drawn up for this. Now, of course, these early, pro early models of this aircraft were quite a bit different uh, than what we ended up with for production. Uh, in the early drawings, these engines were actually mounted along the side of the aircraft. Uh, however, Due to ease of maintenance and whatnot, they decided to sling them in pods underneath the wings later on uh, in the design process. So, this is 1939, 1940, they're still working on this aircraft. By 1941, they have uh, m uh, prototypes up and ready to be used. The first prototype of this aircraft was, of course, uh, with the lack of engines. And that's kind of, people often say, well, this could have been the wonder weapon that won the war for uh, Germany. Unfortunately, um, and yeah, and, and Hitler did make kind of a bad decision. You know, there was some talk about him using this as a fighter bomber. Uh, therefore, it didn't get into use right away as an interceptor. Uh, its biggest problem really um, uh, early in its life, and it continued, plagued itself all the way through uh, World War II, was its engines. <sighs> yeah, it, 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 they were just crap. Um, it had a lot to do with the fact that the materials they needed to produce the engines weren't available. Um, these engines, a lot of times within, for, by 25 hours, had to be completely overhauled. By 35 hours, they were scrap uh, because of the high temperature, uh, lack of metals uh, and, and whatnot to use in the engines to extend their lives. Uh, a little bit later on, they were getting up to 125 hours of, 125 hours of flight time out of these engines. Uh, but yeah, the first, uh, first part uh, of the war, um, almost all the way up to the end, these engines were... Uh, the main problem, uh, not only getting them, but uh, maintaining them uh, for this aircraft was its biggest issue. Uh, why these? Why they didn't see more ME-262s flying in there? I mean, they built about 1,400 of these aircraft. Only at any given time, maybe 200 were operational. Sorry, got a little tri sidetracked there. 1941, um, the first prototype of the uh, ME-262, the ME-262V1, took off. Uh, it had actually without the jet engines it had to use a propeller <laughs> a propeller uh, however the um, the concept the wing designs and all that stuff the aerodynamics of the of the uh, fuselage worked uh, the v3 was the first time this aircraft took off under po uh, jet power which was in 1942 uh, yeah uh, by the night by I believe the v5 or v6 is finally when we got to this look uh, the early models, I believe, up to v, the V4 model uh, prototype, were all tail draggers. This had a tight. Uh, this did not have the tricycle landing gear, uh, but it had a tail uh, wheel uh, on the rear. Uh, early in testing, they found a little bit of problem with that. Is when they were trying to take off uh, with the backwash from the engines. Uh, the elevators wouldn't work, so they could not get the rear end of the aircraft off. I believe a test pilot figured out by hitting the brakes, uh, they could get this thing to take off from the runway. Uh, so yeah, by the time they got this completely figured out and enough materials to produce engines and the material and the engines were becoming available and they were more reliable, uh, it wasn't until 1944 before this aircraft become completely operational. Uh, however, they still were not building enough of them. Anywhere from, you know, 20 to 50 a month uh, was all they were able to get produced with this aircraft. Uh, in combat, quite successful. 542 kills were accredited to ME-262 pilots. Uh, a lot of them were bombers. 
Um, a number of them were P-51s. Uh, the P-51 just could not compete with this thing in altitude. Uh, I shouldn't say altitude. With, with speed um, and climb rate. However, by 1943, uh, the Allied's bombing uh, was where this uh, aircraft really kind of come into its own. Um, unfortunately, with the fact that it was so fast, it had a huge problem, at least uh, pilot-wise, uh, for the pilots to be able to shoot things down because there was such a short amount of time trying to shoot something down that's traveling slow when you yourself are traveling so fast <laughs> leaving just a matter of a few seconds to get their uh to get their guns on and, it, and this was kind of a problem that plagued a lot of the pilots toward the end of the war i mean some of them actually did eventually figure it out but it took uh, quite a bit of time uh to develop the tactics to fight against something that's so much slower than you are you know the p-51s and and whatnot um Bomber formations, they had the same issue. They actually ended up developing a tactic. It was kind of like a roller coaster. They would approach the uh, bomber formation from the rear, get into about the same altitude as the bomber formation, and then not dive, nose dive into a shallow dive uh, to bring themselves up underneath the uh, B-17s. Uh, by doing so, by the time they uh, reached the fighter escort, they were traveling so fast, the fighter escorts had no chance of heading them off. Um, they would duck down below the, the bomber formation uh, and then pull up um, behind the, the uh, of course, by pulling up, they were losing speed. They were able to bleed, bleed enough to speed off to get to around uh, 96 miles an hour before they leveled off in behind the, uh, the bomber formation. Even with that decrease in speed, uh, they still had only around two to four seconds to fire uh, before they were past the bombers uh, and they had to make another pass on them. So yeah, it was a little bit of a of a racehorse, uh, and then the pilots had a little bit of a problem trying to keep these uh, things on target. Uh, a little bit later, they developed the uh, the rocket pod systems on these aircraft, uh, which we have in the game, which are the R4Ms that you see on the wings here. Uh, they would come in from the side of the bomber with the silhouettes uh, and launch these outside of the range of the defensive fire machine guns. Uh, and these bombers and these bombs were, uh, rockets were quite effective against bombers. It only usually took one or two rockets to bring down a B-17 bomber. Um, but for the most part, uh, yeah, they were they were just that much better than everything else running around. In fact, after World War II, when the uh, United States and, uh, and uh, Russia were running around snapping up all this German technology, uh, these this plane was the one of the big. Um, big things i mean the the f-86 uh, and the mig-15 have a, a lot of their design features come from this aircraft uh, not just so much even uh, everybody's like well they used to talk about of course the swept wing uh, which i kind of found interesting when i read about this this swept ring actually didn't come from anything to do with aerodynamics it was the fact that these engines ended up being heavier than they what they thought they were so they had to sweep the wing to offset the um, uh, center of balance uh, if they would have kept it straight, this would have been, it would have been bad. So the 18 degrees uh, sweep of the wings was because of the heavy engines. Uh, of course, there was one measurement designer that wanted a 35 degree uh, swept wing. Of course, we'll see that later on in, of course, the HG2 review. Um, this is what he was actually thinking. This is a 35 degree sweep, um, but this was uh, ixnade early on in development, uh, and of course. We have the only the 18 degree sweep on the uh, ME262. Um, how did the Allies counter this aircraft? They didn't, <laughs> not easily. Uh, in the air, this aircraft was almost impossible to catch, uh, unless the pilot made a mistake of getting slow. Uh, the there was not an Allied aircraft that could catch it or uh, had a chance. Uh, to shoot one down. Uh, of course, there was mistakes made by the German pilots, and, and of course, you know, P-51s did shoot them down uh, and whatnot. The big, I guess, the famous tactic that the uh, al uh, the Allies used to shoot down MA-262s was to catch them on the airfields as they were either landing or taking off. However, that only lasted so long, too, before a lot of the uh, airfields just simply bristled with flak uh, gun emplacements all the way around. I mean, 150 of them uh, in some of the airfields, uh, protecting the approaches to the uh, landing strips uh, from attack. Or they would bring in Falkwaffe 
190s uh, and have them fly cover while the ME262s took off or landed. So yeah, it was quite a um, quite a machine, and, and it just looks right if you look at the aircraft. You're just like, you know, that just that plane looks right, right? Um, you look at the meteor, and you're just like, well, what the fuck were you thinking when you did that? But this plane is, yeah, there's just something about it, you know, and and, and that's probably why it's so iconic uh, to people that uh, know anything about World War II. Is you know, uh, it's got that kind of a great white shark thing going on. It's <laughs> It's just a deadly, and even sitting on the ground, it looks like it's a badass, you know. Um, by the end of the war, uh, you know, not only with the fuel, shortage of fuel, shortage of uh, materials for the engines, uh, it did fight all the way up to the, la to the last part of World War II. In fact, it was the the plane that recorded the last kill uh, before the surrender of Germany. It shot down a uh, um, Russian P-39 Air Cobra. Uh, kind of interesting little fact. Uh, after World War II, uh, of course, these were snapped up by the Americans, uh, the British, and the Russians. Uh, gone over with a fine-tooth comb uh, and everything they learned from this, they stuck it into the next uh, MiG-15, F-86, all those kind of things, um, you know, to, to further their development. Uh, when this thing was compared to the Meteor and the uh, P-80, uh, it was found that this thing was superior in speed, um, altitude performance and uh, very similar to them in climb rate, uh, but for the most part just superior to both the British and the American jets that would have been in production um, to counter the ME-262. Uh, after World War II, there was uh, the Czechoslovakians had two, continued to produce this aircraft. Uh, I do believe they produced nine of single seaters and three double or uh, three two seaters. Uh, they used these uh, ME-262s until 1951 when they uh, inherited uh, Russian uh, aircraft. So yeah, real interesting aircraft. And I'm sorry it took so long, but this is a fucking, like I said, epic plane. And there's so much to talk about it. You can literally read the history of this for days and days and days. And yeah, there's all kinds of little tidbits about this plane. So what do we get in game? Well, we get, of course, the uh, epic 430s. These things are a pain. Um, you watch in game what I'm talking about, and we get 24 R4M uh, rocket pods on the outside. Um, I'm still working out what I'm going to work with this here. I got the uh, gyroscopic sight. Uh, I'm trying out the upgraded engine, and of course, uh, the stock long gun barrels. And I'm running for consumables, emergency engine cooling, uh, improved mixture control, and the of course universal ammo, which kind of drops my survival survivability. Uh, a little bit, but my airspeed has gone up quite a bit. And you'll see what I'm talking about in game uh, when I bring up this uh, beast of a uh, tier 8. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll have the gameplay up for you guys to check out here shortly. Hey, guys, back with the uh, battle in the ME262. So, I played like two or three games last night with this, and then I was like, yeah. Um, then I realized that had an 85% crew on it, and I couldn't hit the broadside of a mountain if I fucking dove into it. So, <laughs> a little frustrating. However, I did get one fairly decent battle out of it. Um, and you, you'll, yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the 430s on here, like I said, unless you play with them a bunch, uh, the dispersion on them is wicked, uh, along with the lead time. Um, like I said, if you play a 10, 15 games into it, you get used to it. But if you don't play with, play with it for a while, uh, yeah, you kind of lose that a little bit. So, start... Uh, do a little climb in here, and that's what this thing is all about. Altitude and speed. Um, great energy retention, good altitude. Pull up in here, and I'm going to pick off my first target, of course, is going to be the heavy fighters. J4M comes around here, and, oh, just get a few shots into it is all I get here. Pull back over here. I got the uh, XP-58. Just getting a few rounds out. Uh, even head on, uh, you watch your shells leave, and they're you know you're directly centered on the target, and the fucking shells are going everywhere, but the baddie that you're trying to shoot at. Yeah, didn't even get the kill on that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's just it's just one of those things you have to work through with the guns. Um, some days they're hitting, some days they're not. I don't know what it is. This dispersion on them is ridiculous. And it also helped, like I said, um, my uh, accuracy uh, was just shit with this plane uh, when I was playing it. Maybe that's why I was a little frustrated. I don't know. So, 
still up around 3,000 meters here. Got a lot of boost with this aircraft here, and I'm just going to stay up here until I, uh, of course, knock out my uh, the enemy players I'm going to run into. Hitting any plane <laughs> head on. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about with the 430s. When they fucking do hit, it's just like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Go back to the garage. However, let's pull up here. XP 58 is coming through here. Make a nice pass on him. Get a bunch into him here. I do have a uh, enemy a KI-84 behind me at 3,000 meters. Uh, go figure. However, with my boost, um, just boost up over at 4,000 and back down. Pick up the KI-84. He is going, oops, missed the KI-84 for some reason. I decided I was going to chase after the heavy fighter, which I thought was my biggest threat. Still going to the vertical here. Trying to get a little bit of separation between me and that heavy fighter. Yeah, he's not paying attention much to him, so I'm going to flip back over here uh, and drop down here on the, K the KI-84, who has stalled out trying to reach my altitude, which lets me have a pretty easy kill. However, I do have the XP behind me now. Oh, I'm sorry. That is not the XP. I got the BF-109 G behind me. With the speed and, like I said, uh, altitude performance of this thing, you can just leave these guys behind. Get up into the climb pull over and it's just about flying and coming back down here putting a bunch of shells into shit as you come down here put a nice little burst into the um, XP didn't quite get him all and now I gotta get on the run here because these guys are gonna be on my tail uh, speed speed is your friend boost back out a little bit here get above up above my 3,000 meters uh, and, yeah, and now I'm looking here to start flipping over here those guys are far enough behind me and we're just gonna flip on over Around that 4,000 meters, pick up my uh, XP-58 coming through here, nail him, and now I have the uh, BF-109. However, like I said, he is a prop, I am a jet, and I am God. <laughs> Take her all the way up, stall her out at 4,300 meters here. BF-109 is, uh, of course, cannot get this high uh, without a little bit of help here, so pull back around here. Yeah, there's Lewis. However, just like in real life, you only have a few seconds to get his shells in. If you hit, you hit. If you don't, then you're just like, fuck. So, back around here, still at 3,900 meters, and uh, I'm looking for an objective here. And I've been fucking dicking off. I haven't really been taking objectives here, and it's been a two to one. But however, we got the first one, which was the most important, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, military base here, So which is starting to launch. Uh, rockets at the airfield here. So I'm looking around here trying to see what I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna start heading back here to see if I can help with the center objective here that we've currently outnumbered uh, Keeping that thing running and taking out targets is always nice uh, Pick up the uh, Falk Wolf 198 um, Yeah, I'm not too sure what I want to shoot at here, yet here. but I pick up the XP 58 and Yeah, he uh, gets a nice burst in it. Go figure. I die spiral to my death heading for oh didn't even damn 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 thought I would get a better shot at that uh, we have the other ME262 uh, who is currently doing his best to finish off that one uh, they have picked up the third objective they picked up the center we finally got two so it's now it's two three however they do have that uh, a center objective here so level out here about 1800 meters we're gonna see if we can have uh, knock off a few enemy fighters here. Game is still early. Uh, it's going to be nice to, of course, try to get the center objective back. Start picking up a little bit of uh, altitude. Um, of course, there's going to be heavy fighters and most likely a few uh, red baddies uh, hanging out over here. Oh, sometimes you just like, God, that thing just looks, yeah, it just looks right. If you look at it from the front, like I said, it's got that kind of a, a great white shark look thing going on. <laughs> Pull down here on my first... Uh, uh, target here, the Falk Wolf A5 or A8, I'm sorry. Completely fucking miss him. <laughs> Didn't think I even scratched the paint. <laughs> but it's funny how all of a sudden the A8 starts to affect your shells. Tries to put some shells into him, only get about half his health, and now I'm up boosting, getting my altitude back up again, uh, and start playing the uh, heavy fighter. Uh, thingy thingy which is altitude altitude and then dropping down on uh, the bad players pick up the k84 start flipping this back 
All right, lost a little bit of altitude. Now I'm starting to gain it back here. 2,700 meters. Uh, we're up to three to two right now. Pull around and miss the J4M. Whoops, thought I was looking at the, uh, thought I was gonna do some fancy bullshit here, like, you know, like I had been. <laughs> Get my uh, altitude back up, do my vertical flip here. And now I'm looking for uh, the J4M that's coming back through here. And once again, just, I mean, I'm literally right on target. I can see the shells fly by the aircraft. Nothing hits, but you know, hey, whatever. Pull around, pick up the J4M, put a few burst rounds into him here. And we are climbing and looking for, once again, the J4M. Come back around, there we go. See if I can get a little better from the side. Nope, 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 nope. And like I said, it, it makes it look worse because of the replay bug. <laughs> I am actually, the shells are getting closer than what it looks like. <laughs> Put a nice pass into the uh, VF 109G, finish him off, pick up the object objective here. So now we're back up to three to two. It's pretty tight game yet, and we have. But now that we do have control of the uh, of this uh, uh, military base again here, it's going to be a lot easier to take the last of the objectives. Uh, they are not sitting pretty right now for um, planes. Yeah, it's about it. Actually, they're up a planes right now. I'm sitting about 93.05 on personal points. Uh, we're going to see what we can do here with the Spitfire 9. Hopefully finish off this. Nope. Didn't quite get it. Up we go. Uh, do not want to have them on your tail. They've picked up. Now it's back to 3-2. to two. Like I said, a very tight game. We had three humans on each side, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a good game, uh, at least when it comes to that here. Picked up the Spitfire 9. Nailed him. Oof. And like I said, sometimes this plane just, you just want to love it. You want to take it. You want to cuddle it. You want to hold it, pet it, and all that kind of shit. And then the next day, you're just like, you know, if I can sleep outside. Because <laughs> them guns can be so frustrating uh, when they don't, when they're not hitting, you know. And then the next moment, you're just, you're making crazy, unbelievable shots. Finished off the J4M. And we only have one more plane to shoot down before we nail this objective here. Uh, and hopefully turn it back. Like I said, tight, tight game. Um, we are now currently up 3-2. We finished off that target, and we get this objective. Now we have to flip back over here and head for the airfields. Um, if, you're, if you don't like heavy fighters, that's the other problem. If you, if you don't like the maneuverability, lack of maneuverability, you're not going to like the ME-262. It, it just, it's just a fucking... It, it, it's a whale <laughs> in the sky. Uh, it's all about speed. It's all about altitude, um, and, and and that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't like to have that, use that kind of stuff. If you like to turn and burn. You're just never gonna. You're just never gonna like this plane. Pull down here on the J4M. We have uh, three two now. Uh, this is like I said, getting to be pretty tight game. However, they only have three planes left, um, with a score of seven to seven oh two to six seventy two. So we're up just a little bit here. We can pick up this objective here. We got a, we got ourselves the win. Pick up the J4M coming through here. Put a couple big bursts into him. We need one more kill to finish off this objective, uh, and of course, probably win the game unless we have some um, dramatic uh, deaths or everybody disconnects from the server at once. <laughs> uh, we still have a pretty good chance of winning this. Day. Pull around under the J4M, and hey, there we go. Pick him up, and of course, return the objective. Back to three to two, and we are currently, yeah, they have two players left, and we are, yeah, 765, 745. Nice tight game, good, good GG on everybody uh, on both sides. Uh, it's always enjoyable to play these kind of games here. So, back toward the center. Uh, we literally have seconds left here, and I don't think I'm gonna get any more, you know. But hey, gotta try. 577 kilometers an hour in flight Great level flight today. is pretty sweet. We'll be waiting for you back home. Finished off with the 12,305 combat score, so not too shabby in the old ME262. Um, next time I wish I would have had a better pilot than the 85% one I had. I think that was probably half my problem with trying to hit shit the dispersion wise. Uh, but yeah, whatever. So hope you guys enjoy, and uh, thanks for watching.